In today's notes, we're going to look at the start of factoring. And what we're going to start with is factoring a greatest common factor. A greatest common factor is the highest number that divides exactly into two or more numbers. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to be looking for what we call the greatest common factor. So our directions say to factor completely, which means we have to get that biggest number, that biggest factor, out of our problem. So if we take a look at letter A, we have 10x plus 24. Our terms are broken down by the plus sign or the minus sign. So for instance, here 10x is one term, 24 is your second term. And what we want to do is we want to look at both of those terms and determine what is the greatest common factor that we can divide 10 and 24 by. And the biggest number that goes into 10 and 24 exactly is 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 2 out in front and we're going to multiply it by what's left. To figure out what goes inside here, we're dividing each term by the number we've taken out. So 10x divided by 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that gives us 5x plus 24 divided by 2 is just 12. So plus 12. And that's factored completely. What I would do after you factor it completely in your head, go back and check it. Multiply it back out. Distribute. 2 times 5x, 10x. 2 times 12, 24. And then you know you've done it correctly. Let's try another one in letter B. This time we have three terms, negative 30x squared, negative 5x, and 5. And if we have a leading coefficient that is negative, we're going to factor that negative out, as it's going to make things later on easier for us if that leading coefficient is positive. So I know I have to take out a negative, and then I'm looking at all my terms, negative 30, negative 5, and 5. What's the biggest number that I can divide all three of those by? And that would be negative 5. So I'm going to take the negative 5 out in front, and I'm going to be left with, again, I'm dividing these by negative 5. Negative 30 divided by negative 5 is 6, and I still have my x squared there. So 6x squared. Then negative 5x divided by negative 5 is just a negative divided by a negative. We'll make that a positive 1x, which is just x. And then finally, 5 divided by negative 5 is negative 1. And then I'm going to check. I'm going to distribute. Negative 5 times 6x squared, negative 30x squared. Negative 5 times x, negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 1, positive 5. That last check step, again, you can do it right in your head, will tell you whether or not you have everything that you need. So please don't skip that part. Then if we take a look at letter C, we have 2x to the third plus 16x. So we have two terms here, 2x to the third and 16x. And we're looking for that greatest common factor. We have a 2 here and a 16 here. The biggest number that we can divide 2 and 16 by is 2. So we can take a 2 out. But also notice in this problem, we have an x and an x to the third. Both factors have a variable of x. If we look at the smallest number of x's that everything has, that would be 1. We can take 1x out of both of these. So we're going to bring an x out as well. And then we're going to divide. 2x to the third divided by 2x. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And x to the third divided by x, if you think back to your rules of exponents, x to the third divided by x. This is your property where we have a 1 on the bottom, a 3 on the top and we subtract, so we would end up with x squared. Then we have 16x divided by 2x, so 16 divided by 2 is 8. And then an x divided by an x would just be a 1, so we don't need that term anymore, or that x anymore. And then we're going to go through and check. 2x times x squared is 2x to the third. 2x times 8 is 16x. So I have everything that I need. Then in letter D, I have negative 18v squared minus 12v to the third plus 21v to the second. And actually, this letter D here, that should be a 4. So I'm going to change that real quick. This was supposed to be a 4. I think it's going to be in your notes as a 4, but let's change it on here. So we have a v to the fourth. 12v to the third and a 21v to the second. 
Now, if we go ahead and, and look for our greatest common factor, we're first looking at negative 18, negative 12, and 21. What number can divide all these? Notice our leading coefficient, again, is negative, so we want to tack, tack, take out a negative. So we're going to take out a negative, and then 18, 21, and 12 are all divisible by 3. That's the biggest number. So we're going to take out a negative 3. And then we can look at our variables. All of these have Vs. We have two Vs in this term, three Vs in this term, and four Vs in this term. You're always looking for the smallest number of variables that everything has, and that would be the V to the second. So we can also take out here a V to the second. And then if we divide negative 18 divided by negative 3 is 6. And then we have a V to the second, or a V to the fourth divided by V to the second. You're subtracting those exponents, and that gives us a V to the second. Negative 12 divided by negative 3 is going to be a positive 4. So we have plus 4. And then V to the third divided by V squared will leave us with that V. Finally, we have 21 divided by negative 3, which is going to change this to a negative 7. And then a v to the second divided by v to the second is just 1, so the v is not there anymore. And then we check. Negative 3v squared times 6v squared is negative 18v to the fourth. Negative 3v squared times 4v, negative 12, and then v to the third. And negative 3v squared times negative 7 is positive 21 v squared. And the last one that we can do together, letter E here, we have negative 18 Q plus 63 QM minus 54 QM squared P to the fourth. We do have three terms here. Remember, terms are separated by addition and subtraction signs. So this last one, even though it looks very long, is just one term because everything's being multiplied together. So we're going to take a look. We have negative 18, we have a 63, and negative 54. Our leading coefficient here, again, is negative, so we're going to take a negative out. And then 18, 63, and 54, the biggest number they are all divisible by is 9. So we're going to take out a negative 9. And then we have to look at our variables, and each one separately. The first variable we have is a Q. We have a Q here, we have a Q in the middle term, and we have a Q in the last term which means since they all have a Q, we can take a Q out. If you look at the M's, though, the second term and the third term both have M's, but the first term does not, so there's no M to take out of it, which means we can't factor it out. Same thing goes for the P. The last term has a P to the fourth, but the other two terms do not have any P's to take out, so we cannot take out any P's. And then we're left with negative 18 divided by negative 9 is 2, and the Q is taken out. In our second term, 63 divided by negative 9 is negative 7. And then we took a Q out, so all we're left with here is an M. And in our last term, negative 54 divided by negative 9 is a positive 6. Now the Q is taken out, but the M squared and the P to the fourth are still there. And last thing to do is to check. Negative 9q times 2 is negative 18q. Negative 9q times negative 7m is 63qm. Negative 9q times 6m squared p to the fourth is negative 54qm squared p to the fourth. Next, I would like you to do some on your own. So go ahead and pause it and try the 6 below. Unpause it when you're ready to check your answer. If you did number 1 correctly, number 1 should be 2x times 2x minus 1. Number 2 should be 3 times 2x squared minus x plus 4. Number 3, negative 5x times 5x squared plus x minus 3. Number 4, 6x squared times x squared minus 3. 5 is what we would say not factorable. There are no greatest common factors to take out. And number 6 is 8x to the 4th times 5 
minus 2x plus 7x squared. If you have any questions, let me know.